from his studios in New York. It's time for Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora, where sports meets life. Here's your host, Dan Tortora. Welcome here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on Wake Up Call DT.com. You will find the archive anytime by simply clicking on the show archive on wakeupcalldt.com. You can also, right under the MixLR live feed, you can click on the RSS feed, the Wake Up Call DT app powered by Podbean, and the Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora iTunes podcast. By clicking on any of those, you'll get over 800 shows, including this one, which is a early National Signing Day special that I am proud to have here on the broadcast. Signing Day is typically that first full week of February, that Wednesday. Well, now the NCAA has added this initial signing day, which is December 20th of this year. And so Syracuse had the opportunity to sign their players on early, whether or not they're enrolling early. And I'm proud to have on this broadcast... Willem Fromey, offensive tackle from Exeter High School in Exeter, New Hampshire. Will, how you doing today? Uh, I'm awesome, man. And being being awesome, having this feeling, this moment, you know, this is a realization of a dream for you. So just bring me into that. Um, well, you know, um, I knew that uh, you know the day was coming since you know, June when I committed. Um, but, you know, actually the, having, you know, being able to sign and, 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 you know, actually put my name down on the paper was awesome. You know, it was just an awesome feeling. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm part of the team now, officially. So, you know, it, it's exciting. To have this early signing day period, uh, obviously signing day is that, you know, that first full week in February, that Wednesday, typically every single year, and it, and it will be there again this year, but the NCAA decided to allow an early signing day period for December 20th. What, when you found out the news that there was going to be an earlier day to put your name on the dotted line, just bring me into you know what you thought of that and being a part of history with this new early signing day period. Well, I, I knew I wanted to get, you know, get it out of the way early, you know, um, you know, because now I don't, ha- I, I have, you know, nothing to worry about, um, you know, and and uh, somebody was making a joke today. It's like uh, two Christmases in in a week, so. And to have that, to have two Christmases in a week, why does this feel like Christmas to you? Why is this such a gift for you? It's a big deal, you know. Um, you know, I love football. It's, you know, my favorite thing to do. And, you know, I get I get to keep playing football through college, and that's just an awesome feeling. Speaking here with Willem Fromey, offensive tackle coming from Exeter High School in Exeter, New Hampshire. Coming out of New Hampshire, obviously, it's not a big state, Will. It's a small area, and we, you know, I've talked to some guys from Delaware, and you're coming from, you know, New Hampshire, Vermont, those types of schools where it could be harder to get yourself out there and and get, you know, some respect for your game. Did you feel that growing up? Did you feel like you had to work hard and then work twice as hard or three times as hard because New Hampshire isn't a big state and, you know, it's one of those places that maybe could get overlooked at times? Um, yeah, you know, um, New Hampshire isn't, you know, I've had teammates um, in the past five years or so. We've had, I think, four, six years, I think, four people have gone D1 um, for the whole state. And, it's, and they've all been from, actually, no, 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 because there was a kid from Nashua. So six years, five kids on D1. Um, and I know in other states it's a, it's a lot more than that. Um, so I knew, you know, there was a possibility, but... Um, just being from New Hampshire um, definitely made it tougher. Um, but, you know, once I started getting in contact with schools, um, then, you know, my hopes got up. And, you know, here we are today. And when you have that, when you, like you said, in six years, five guys, 
just just what that means to you to represent the state of New Hampshire because it's not just about representing Exeter High School but it's about the entire state when the numbers are so small just what you could say I mean there's schools down in Florida that are sending 10 12 13 15 guys and to see just one school in the state of Florida so to represent the state of New Hampshire just what that means to you um, it's awesome man you know every um, every game I played you know, people knew who I was, um, you know, on the other teams and stuff, and, and I couldn't always name, you know, other players, but they always knew who I was. So um, I think some people probably look up to me, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm proud of that, and I'm proud to, you know, represent the state that, you know, I'm coming from and that, you know, made me. And when you look at the fact of, you know, saying the state made you, speaking here with Willem Fromey from Exeter High School in Exeter, New Hampshire, how did the state make you? What can you say about what New Hampshire has done, not for you just as a player, but for you as a person? Um, well, you know, as, um, as a player, um, Coach Balls, you know, we've, we've, since I was playing, I started playing football fifth or sixth grade, um, and in, in the youth uh, programs, they ran, you know, his system of football. So, and, you know, and, and I've had every single coach I've had, you know, believes in hard work um, and, you know, mental toughness and stuff like that. And, uh, and you know, that, that sort of stuff, you know, is really relevant in football, but it, it translates into, you know, other things, you know, work and, and school, you know, hard work and and not giving up. And when you look at the mental toughness side of things, uh, that's a very important piece, at least in my opinion. I feel like, you know, as a football player or any type of athlete, you have that opportunity to go out there and, you know, you can learn, you can watch film and you can learn the playbook and you can go in the weight room and do this, that, and the other thing. But if you're mentally not tough, if you don't believe in yourself, None of that stuff's going to equal anything of any merit. So just what you could say about the importance of mental toughness and if you consider it to be the most important thing. Um, I think so, yeah. You know, because mental toughness is, is there's a lot of things that go into that. You know, it's um, when you start getting tired, you know, if you're going to give up or if you're going to keep, you know, put your head down and just, you know, work through it. Um, and it's, you know, no, you know in your plays... Um, and your calls, um, not making any mistakes, you know, no mental mistakes. Um, and really, it, it's, you know, uh, going through, you know, a checklist before each play, you know, you know, you know what you do, you're supposed to do, um, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely really important. So having that mental toughness, what can you say about the coaching staff you've had at Exeter? How did they help you to really hone that skill and just what you could say about maybe some of the individual coaches that helped you along the way? Oh, yeah. Um, we had this year, um, every year when we make playoffs, we get a shirt. Um, and it always says Exeter, you know, 2017 playoffs, 2015, whatever. And on the back, he, he always puts, um, you know, a... Uh, like a quote or, or some sort of statement, and this year it was mental toughness on the back. So it was, it was like mental toughness is a choice or something like that. Or, no, it was toughness is a choice. But um, all all the coaches that I've had, you know, Coach Ball, Coach through high school, always preach that, you know, and and they always work us hard, and just the whole the whole program we have. Um, we're one of the you know, New Hampshire still has doubles, double sessions um, in preseason. Um, and not too many schools around the state do. Um, but we, we always have doubles, and Coach Ball loves doubles because it weeds out the kids who aren't going to work hard. And when you have those doubles, and like you said, it weeds out who, who's going to work hard and who's not going to work hard. Just bring me into, you know, how much you had to do for those doubles and staying prepared and, you know, putting your body out there on the line, just what that's done to prepare you for college? Uh, yeah, so doubles this year was um, every day. It, it was, I think, 9 to 11 and then 2 to 4. 
and then some days we'd have a lift afterwards. Um, so, you know, we spent at least four hours a day during doubles, um, working on, you know, football. And then I had, uh, you know, late spring, early summer, I pulled my hamstring. And so I was working on all summer. That was a project, getting that back in shape, um, and re-strengthening it. And so through doubles, um, we get one day off. And I always had to come in and run a mile um, because, you know, Coach Ball knew I wasn't I wasn't about to, you know, I'd already committed and I wasn't about to give up anything. Um, so. And to know that you had that faith in yourself and that desire and, and that want to, you know, to not give up and to push forward to where you are today. Did you always envision that this was going to be you, that this was going to be your life, a, a Division One football player, or did you feel like it was something that, you know, kind of came on over time? I mean, did you always see this, or is it something that, you know, just developed over time to a point where you believed, hey, you know what, I could make it here? Well, um, freshman year, freshman or sophomore year, I decided I wanted to play football in college. Um, and I was talking to D3 schools, D2 schools, and then actually this spring, um, the first contact I had with a D1 school was UNH, the local um, team. And they texted me, you know, kind of early spring. Um, and that's when I was like, oh, I can, uh, I can go D1. And then, you know, I, from, from there on, from that, that point on, I, you know, I had more and more contact with schools. Um, and, you know, it's kind of, you know, Syracuse through the whole, the whole process. Those guys stood out to me. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I picked them. And when you say that Syracuse stood out to you, Willem, what was, what was it about? Syracuse have made it so special. I know that you've been on the show here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora before, and we've discussed the importance of Syracuse to you. Bring me into why they stood out so much. What was so special about Syracuse? Yeah. Um, well, you know, when they when they first texted me um, or reached out to me, um, I was on a bus to a track meet. And I was like, well, you know, Syracuse just texted me. And the first thing that popped into my head was, you know, the, the you know, football legends that had, had come through that school, you know, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little, Donovan McNabb. Um, and so that was the first thing that, you know, stood out to me. Um, and then, you know, I talked to him, um, some of the coaching staff on the phone, and all of them just seemed like really awesome, awesome guys. Um, and then, you know, when I was in Syracuse the first time, I got to meet everybody. Um, the dome is insane. The school is really good, so I'm going to get a great education. Um, and, the, you know, the people around in Syracuse. We went to, what's it called, Destiny, the mall. Yeah. And, uh, and I saw a whole lot of people wearing orange. So, you know... All the other schools that I had been to um, didn't have, you know, the, the following Syracuse has or quite the, the rich history that it has. And, you know, I just decided that uh, this is where I wanted to be. When you were in the community in Syracuse and you were visiting and, like you said, you went to Destiny USA to the mall and you got to walk around and see that, you know, how many people were wearing orange? Because, I mean, these are people going out – you know, going about their daily lives, they don't they don't know who you are walking through. You don't know who they are, so you didn't know what you're going to see when you went out there. Were you surprised at how many people wore orange? And just bring me into walking through the mall and how much Syracuse support you really saw just by walking through the mall. Oh yeah, um, lot, lots and lots of people. Um, you know, I when I visited other schools. Um, you know, the, the surrounding towns and stuff, people weren't all decked out in their, you know, Syracuse gear and stuff. And, but I saw like probably at least a hundred people in orange. And then, so, you know, it was just like around here, BC is, is the local FBS team. 
and uh, you don't see a whole lot of BC gear. But you, you actually see about as much Syracuse gear, even up here, um, as as a lot of other schools. So. And when you have that, like you said, BC is kind of the one that you see there in New Hampshire. You're going to have the opportunity to go up against BC every single season for the next four to five years, three to five years. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, of the two schools that you have seen living in New Hampshire, the people wearing orange, people wearing maroon for Boston College, what are you excited about about that matchup with BC? I actually have um, a former teammate on BC. Um, he's a tight end. I think he's number 41. He was a red shirt this year, but I'm I'm excited to to see him every year and hopefully beat beat them every year. Um, just to rub it in his face a little bit, I guess. And share with everybody who your former teammate is. Uh, his name's Hunter Long. He was a uh, he graduated high school last year and then he did a uh, post grad year. <laughs> So you have an opportunity to go up against your former teammate, and like you said, rub it in his face a little bit. So you're going to have a, a kind of heated, interesting matchup with Boston College, even more so than the typical game that Syracuse has. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's that's going to be fun for my coach, too, because, you know, he coached both of us. And, and I, I, yeah, so he'll, he'll probably end up coming down for some of those games. I'm, just, that's the, that's the, I'm excited about that because it'll be a fun matchup. Is he going to be wearing a half maroon, half orange shirt with your names on it? I hope so. That would be awesome. <laughs> now, Willem, before I let you go, I want to look at this staff and just what this Syracuse staff means to you, just to share your thoughts on, on the importance of this staff and, and who you've really grown to become close with. Because, you know, they've had back to back years under Babers, two and six in the ACC, back to back overall, four and eight, yet. You believe in them, and so many people, so many recruits believe in Syracuse, have signed their name on the dotted line. Over 80% of the verbal commits early signing period here on December 20th said yes to Syracuse officially. So just what you could say about the coaching staff that you're close with and why you believe in them. Yeah, those guys, they're, they're awesome. You know, and when I was up um, on my official, um, I had lots of the, the – uh, the guys that I met who would, you know, who were on the team already, told me that the coaching staff is awesome, you know, and uh, and unfortunately, you know, the the start to this season for Syracuse was awesome, you know, going in and, and putting up lots of points against teams like LSU and then beating Clemson, uh, but you know, guys guys get banged up, and I think you know that's that's sort of what we saw. Um, so, you know, when, uh, you know, this, this, doing something like beating Clemson is going to, is going to, a team that can do that, you know, one of the only teams that's been able to do that in the past, in, in this year, um, you know, that's, that's a huge accomplishment. And, you know, if, if you can do it once, you can do it again. And when you look at, you know what you're looking to do with this class I mean you're coming in as an offensive tackle on the squad and there's going to be some other guys that are joining you on the offensive line for Syracuse in this class one of the guys that was supposed to be joining you was Tyrone Sampson Jr. on the day that he was supposed to sign his letter to officially go orange he decided to decommit and open up his recruitment do you have a relationship at all with tyrone were you surprised at that at all because you had committed so early and so did he um you know i've met tyrone twice um i met him on my official and then you know we, we had the day where we where i went up to the camp and actually earned my offer i met him both those days um, so I didn't have an awesome relationship with him, but you know, I I knew who he was, he knew who I was, um, and yeah, it definitely definitely surprised me. It was not what I expected, you know, from somebody who would, you know, he was going to come early. He'd been committed forever, you know, and it just wasn't what you know surprising, but. 
Now, still in the class, even if he ultimately doesn't come to Syracuse after opening up his other four official visits, you'll be coming in with Kadir White and Carlos Vetterello. What do you think about that, about having offensive linemen to come in with you? There's offensive linemen that came in last year, and there's obviously some guys that were playing that are very young players. So, I mean, the offensive line for Syracuse is built with a lot of youth of of you know a couple years ago in Dino's first recruiting class last year in his second recruiting class and you being his third recruiting class he's really trying to build up the offensive line and build the depth there what are you excited about about the fact that it is a bunch of young guys on this line there's really no vets on it and there's an opportunity for you to play there's an opportunity for anybody to play yeah you know um, offensive line is is one of the most important units on the field um, and you know, obviously, you know, whoever's whoever you know deserves it's going to play. Um, but you know, I think you know people are telling me you know if you're if you're smart, you can move around on the other line, which means there's no and nobody's got exactly like a set position on the line. You know, people can move around, buff can change. Um, and so, you know, whatever happens, happens, and I'm excited for it. You committed to Syracuse verbally on June 20th. December 20th, we're looking, you know, six months later, you've signed your name on the dotted line. How how crazy is that for you to commit in June and then here in December it's done, you don't have to worry about February. You, you, all you have to do is prepare yourself for next June when you get to come onto campus. I mean, Guys sign early if, if they're going to be early enrollees. They sign early if they're junior college transfers. But for you to get this all out of the way so far in advance, what is that like for you? Um, you know, I was never super worried about stuff. But my parents, they like to stress out about things. So they were stressed out. Um, so I think it's, you know, some weight off their back, some weight off my back. Um, and, you know, now I can, like you said, just focus on working out and, and getting my body ready and stuff. And, Willem, before I let you go here, in closing, if I had to make a mission statement about you and I said Willem Fromey is blank, not just as an athlete, not just as a, a student or a son, but overall, if I was describing you, how would you want me to describe you? Um, maybe dedicated. Uh, yeah, let, let, let's go with dedicated. And why choose that word above everything else? Um, because I have, you know, football at least is is what is one of the most important things in my life to me. Um, and so I'm going to do anything I can to keep it in my life and to be able to keep playing. So. And when you look at your attributes versus the areas you want to work on, what are those things that you bring to Syracuse? What are the best pieces of your game? And then what are the places in your game that you really want to work in now that you have this you know, done, you don't have to worry about signing, so now you can focus on getting ready. What are the biggest attributes, and where are those areas that you're going to be working on the most? Yeah, so um, my team in high school was a heavy, heavy run team. So I've got... Uh, you know, I'm gonna hopefully bring some run block to you know because I'm that's that's my uh, my specialty, I guess. Um, and then you know, going into like a no huddle, fast paced, you know, it's a new system. New, you know, I got a lot of new stuff to work on and learn. Um, so yeah. And you have the opportunity to be out there with Eric Dungey, who's obviously been very successful. A guy like Rex Culpepper, who got some time last year. Tommy DeVito, who's had a lot of hype around his game. Chance, who just decided to decommit from one school and commit and sign with Syracuse. How excited are you as an offensive lineman for who you're going to be blocking for? Because on paper, as of right now, it looks like there's some gunslingers, some runners, some guys with some pretty fun abilities coming up. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I met Tommy, um, and, you know, whoever it, whoever it ends up being that I, you know, I'm blocking for it, you know, I'm excited for it. Finally, for you in closing, Willem, what is the definition of the Syracuse offensive line moving forward, in your opinion? 
Um, what do you mean, like, definition? Like, what would you want to be a tagline or a statement about the offensive line? How would you like to describe the future of Syracuse football? Ooh. I mean, I'd like to say fast, but I feel like that's cheating because <laughs> that's, already, that's already tacked on there. Um, hmm. What about fast you know, and physical? Would that be good? Yeah, sure. Physical, something like that. Okay. You know, because I don't know. Physicality is important. All right, fair enough. That coming from Willem Fromey from Exeter High School in Exeter, New Hampshire. Thank you, Willem, for what you're doing to represent the state of New Hampshire, and I look forward to talking with you very soon. And as always, God bless, man, and go enjoy it with the family. All right, thank you.